Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Lynn Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. In our first segment, we're going to do some spring dreaming in this winter. Julio and I will be discussing the top garden trends for 2023. Nothing is more stunning than a red cardinal against a white snow background. We'll discuss the best way to attract cardinals to your home in our second segment. Pantone has announced the color of the year. Viva Magenta. <laughs> we'll discuss the impact of Pantone's influence on everything from fashion to gardening and more in our third segment. Leaf shine is always available in a houseplant area at your local garden center. But does it really do anything? We'll explain why a little shine can help your houseplants in our fourth segment. Last but not least, this week's houseplant rant, we're talking about Diffenbachia. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back in the garden right after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Fertilum's Azalea and Evergreen Food plus Systemic Insecticide 915-3 contains five micronutrients which are designed for azaleas and evergreens to provide the proper nutrients and producing stunning green leaves and essential new growth while protecting the plant from damaging insects for up to eight weeks. Fertilum's Azalea and Evergreen Food contains 9% nitrogen for green growth, building bigger stems and leaves, 15% phosphorus for root growth and increased flower production, 13% potash to promote vigorous growth so plants are better able to resist disease and cold. The micronutrients are the icing on the cake to enhance further growth strengthen and beautify color. Tired of seeing your plants prematurely drop their leaves, the flowers disappear? Fertilum's Azalea Evergreen Food plus Systemic Insecticide 91513 contains an easy to apply insecticide that keeps your azaleas and evergreens looking great all year long. Those hungry insects do not have a chance. Apply in spring before bud sprout and continue throughout the season as indicated on the label growing guide. Fertilum's Azalea and Evergreen Food plus Systemic Insecticide 91513 with micronutrients is a must for the passionate Azalea and Evergreen grower to help produce that beautiful abundance of color and fantastic fragrance everyone will love. So next time you visit your favorite garden center, pick up Fertilum's Azalea and Evergreen Food plus Systemic and expect to have the best looking shrubs in the neighborhood. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 AM WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Hey, with the holidays in the rearview mirror, finally, oh, yes. our attention <laughs> turns to spring and what we'll do in our gardens and landscape. I'm feeling pretty good about this segment. Yes. Do you remember my New Year's resolution? No. Oh, yeah, the cottage Some garden. Friend. Yes, the cottage garden. About yep, cottage. colonial garden in mm -hmm. front of my house. Yep, Thomas Jefferson and uh, who was the other person? Tom, Thomas Jefferson, George Washington. George Washington, yeah. Mine. Master gardeners. Yeah, know, absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, so 
Number one was growing your own bouquets. Ooh. So cutting gardens. I mean, everybody loves to give flowers and receive flowers and saves me money. Yeah, um, <laughs> but in any case, <laughs> that you can grow all of the materials in a cutting garden that you will be able to give throughout the entire mm-hmm. summer. You're going to want to use plants that are easy to grow, sunflowers, zinnias. Zinnias, Zinnia, like you get the oh. you get the most out of zinnias. Yeah, Cosmos. Yeah. Cosmos has oh, not only a great flower, uh-huh. but ferny foliage. Yes. So it, yeah. it yeah. gives you double, uh, double whammy. So look for things that have great colors, large flowers, um, and that uh, even things like celosia. You can oh, use yeah. that celosia. and add celosia yeah. to... Mm-hmm. Asters mm-hmm. is another thing mm-hmm. where where a lot of times we're looking for blue, and asters oh, yeah. can provide you a really good mm-hmm. blue. Let me just say something, Len. Tell me. You know, you were talking about cutting gardens. You, I think we were in, at the cutting edge of we this because we you brought this in like a few years back. We, we have a specific section at Bloomers, uh-huh. and hopefully your local garden center does too. If not, ask them. Yeah. Um, that is just for, for cutting gardens. Yes. Um, and it all was inspired from our trip to Bartram Gardens. Bartram Gardens, yes. We were trying to love, find Love Lies Bleeding, mm-hmm. um, and that sure enough, we found it. And that, yeah. so this one collection, it's just all cutting garden plants. Yep, and I tell you what, it, it's it's been fun mm-hmm. for me because I obviously plant them. But also, you know, our customers, they don't have to root through and have to know, like, than an aster, you know, they're looking for asters because it has a little label on the top that says cutting flower. That's it. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Isn't it? Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, it is. Um, just keep in mind that that your cutting garden is going to want full sun mm-hmm. and that uh, you can use a raised bed without any problem. Yeah, yeah, uh, but again, it, it's just make sure that you keep mm-hmm. it watered because mm-hmm. um, what will happen, and, and I actually am guilty. This is this is I guess one of our garden blunders, blunders that we yeah. I should maybe I should say uh, this for next year, uh, but that uh, I did let my plants dry out and all the foliage underneath turned brown. Mm. The flowers looked great, but the foliage, foliage looked awful, God. awful. So when I went and cut them, I had to get rid of all the foliage and then you know Got no foliage. wasn't good, <laughs> yeah. wasn't good. So make sure that you're keeping things watered. Mm. Um, and I just keep an eye on it. Again, insects disease can always be an issue. Right. Powdery mildew, right. especially with yeah. zinnias. Yeah. But yeah. there you go. It, and then number two is very close to the same thing. And I, I just love this. Mm. It's creating cottage garden, cottage right? Gardens, yes. Mm-hmm. Romantic, Romantic planting yeah, very style, much. very mm-hmm. much. It's you know there are also a lot of the plants that are in cutting gardens could be in here. Yeah. But this is where you can add some of the perennials into mm-hmm. your garden where you're going to add, say, foxglove, or you can add yeah. some, and like even shrubs like hydrangeas. Rangers, yeah. And that Rangers. it gives it that romantic Rangers. feel. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I guess I'm a romantic yeah, you soul. Are. You are. But one thing <laughs> that you don't think about is put something that's a little different. What different? Yeah. You're going to, like, one of the, one of the, I see, I, here we go. We're going back to movies. We talked about movies last time. What is the, it's like there's a little, is it The Hobbit, where it's a little door up in Lancaster? Hobbit. It's a Hobbit? Okay, where it's a little round door and that it's like built into the side of a side of it. Definitely. Up in Lancaster County, um, I, you know, going to pick up uh, pumpkins, there's this one house that has one of those <laughs> built in, and it is so cool. Oh, wow. It is so cool. So look for adding a feature. It could be like an old wheelbarrow. Yeah. It could be a bicycle. Mm-hmm. It could be something that's that's a, something that will like surprise you. And this is where you put statues in. Um, my wife, Debbie, she had what we called the goat girl. The goat girl. Which yeah. was just a statue of, hmm. she was hot. Yeah. <laughs> she, but she was made out of concrete, so she's kind of cold. Yeah. But uh, anyway, but but again, it it was just a very classical style concrete statue, mm-hmm. um, and that it just added so much to the landscape, mm-hmm. and it was just a little thing. So this is where you go out and you find 
something that mm. uh, is special to you. Yeah, a little add addition to, uh, right. know, to what you're having. Right. Do, you, do, you have do you have any like things like that? No, I don't. No? no. I've, I've got you actually quite a few. Oh, yeah? I really do. I, I have a, um, it's actually a, um, it's made out of zinc. Oh. And it's a light that is near my pond. And that it actually was my parents that oh. I took from their house nice. and had it, you know, we basically repainted it. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's incredible. It's an incredible piece it because it's like a fountain. Sentimental, sentimental it has sentimental value, yeah. but it's also, it's about six feet tall. Wow. So it, it it's very, mm. it, it is also, because it's a lamp, mm. it's an outdoor lamp, it greets my family when they come home. Nice. So, all right, all yeah. right, all right, I'll get off of it. <laughs> What about lawn tool there? Or, uh, uh, I'm trying to get rid of my Zosia. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it has yeah. a personal problem. Yes, I do. <laughs> Zosia Slowly grass. getting rid of it. And they're tear people are tearing out their lawns. Yes, they are. And they're getting rid of them for drought-tolerant, pollinator-friendly plants. Mm -hmm. and, but this has been going on for years. Yes. I, personally, right. I always wanted a lawn that you could have a football game on. Oh, yeah. And That's you it. have that. That's it. Yep. You have that. Yeah, my, my – but – I don't know. I don't know if I should. <laughs> Getting older. I mean, I don't have grandkids yet. yet. Right, Melissa right. and Steve? Yet. That's right. <laughs> anyway, uh, Steve said he, he at his home he wanted to have a large enough open grass area to play wiffle ball. Oh, boy. So no. he wants a boy. So he, he went. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll leave my family out of it, okay? <laughs> but the whole idea is uh, reducing that lawn right. so you don't have to, you know, Get sucked into yeah. the Scott's Four Step program. <laughs> yeah, we're right. going to talk about that. Later we're going to make. We're going to lead our listeners hand mm -hmm. in hand, hand through the whole process yes. of caring for their lawn, mm -hmm. so you don't have to That's buy right. lawn mm -hmm. services to take care of it. It's going to be your lawn. You're you're going to be taking care of it your way for what it needs, and not it because of what they have on the truck. Mm -hmm. All right. That's a side note. Also <laughs> part of our mm -hmm. New Year's resolutions. Yeah. So people getting rid of their lawn, they're planting flowers. And right. again, it just is something where they're just making it kind of wild. Oh, yeah. They're letting it go wild Natural. and, yeah, very and nice. with plants that uh, support, support that, that yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. um, Mediterranean gardens. Oh, wow. Well, this sounds like something yeah, right like, up your alley. That's right, yeah. Explain what a Mediterranean garden is. <clears throat> Boy, you know, a Mediterranean garden, you know, I, I wasn't even <sighs> thinking about that. But, you know, it's, uh, it's really growing. When I hear, yes, and it's um, the style is is like less. You have less water to use because of the fact that these plants don't need it, right? And it's uh, and, uh, and the climate lots, is going to be drier. Lots of lavender, lots of, lavenders, lots of, yeah. lots of different plants, the Russian that, sage, yeah, things like that. You know, you have your echinaceas; they're going to be part of that too. Yeah, they don't need much water, and um, so it, it's really a great you know idea to have this because it's going to conserve. That's right. Energy. Right. It all has to do do with uh, the environment and yeah. not overusing water. Mm -hmm. uh, another reason why lawns are, are uh, kind of being converted into more garden space. That's right. Um, but I always think you need to have a good garden. Uh -huh. You need a little bit of grass and an area just because it just looks. It, it looks adds better. so much. It's like. Mm -hmm. You know, if you put a painting on the wall and you don't have a, a, a good frame around it, it's uh, like, yeah, uh, you know, it. look at that. Yeah. But with a frame, it mm -hmm. accentuates it does. the painting. So it does. same type of thing. Lawns will accentuate Essentially. your gardens. Mm -hmm. uh, texture. Co what do we say? Color, texture, texture, texture form. form. Every mm -hmm. landscape, every planting, color, mm -hmm. texture, and form. Adding texture with foliage plants, and we don't mean tropical plants, mm -hmm. we mean foliage plants like plants that don't aren't grown for flowers, like ferns. Mm -hmm. Ferns add so much, and there are ferns that can be grown in full sun. There are plant ferns that can be done in shade. Mm -hmm. Yep. It, it it also hostas. Things, yep. <laughs> right, hostas. Um, you know, lambs ear. Lambs ear. Yeah. Lambs ear. A lot of things are are also to the touch, mm -hmm. and again, it, it's things you can create in areas of your yard that will basically take up some of the some of the yard uh, of the lawn, and. It's just stuff that looks interesting and different that makes you want to walk up and touch it. Touch it, yeah. Natural materials. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that, Julio? 
Oh yeah, that's that's a, a big area too, though. You know, we we kind of don't look at it, but I'm we should. Sick of pavers. Oh yeah. Oh my God. No, pavers, no more yeah. pavers. No. I know. Great. More of a natural pavers. stones or concrete. Yeah, concrete. Yeah. No, yeah. We want natural stones. You know, in our in our gardens. To, yeah. To you know to see that it is you know nature, not uh, right. man made material. Right. And anybody who like any of your garden centers that are selling pond supplies that they're going to have stone where you can make walkways with the flat stone mm. and it's natural not something like you know oh it's you know it's, it's 18 inches by 24 inches right. not something that organized mm. it's something where Cookie it cutters. becomes stepping stones yep. you know that if you're <laughs> if you the the area in between and see I love this part mm. the area in between the stones you can plant with things like um Golden thyme and yeah. and again it, it the, the lemon thyme yeah. and moss and things like that where mm. where you can still get through it but but to me I love the the different fragrances that some of the different types of herbs, herbs. give you because yeah. as you walk over that path you smell it you huh? end up where your feet brush the top of those plants and it gives you the whole new sensation because again you have sight. You know, you hear the birds and the animals that are there, but now you smell the different fragrances. And there are a lot of times that are out there that do, and I don't mean times like New York times. <laughs> I, I mean like time the herb right. that can grow in small spaces. Look for areas of your garden center that are called like steppables or areas that have something to do with with walkways or or that you can walk on. And, and that's... Uh, that that, to me, that's beautiful. That Where natural stone, done in an in a, in, in a situation like that, to me is it just is kills it. Yeah, it does. kills it. Mm -hmm. oh, Gardening for wildlife has been around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's getting a little long in the tooth. <laughs> <laughs> All that means is that it's been it's been a trend mm -hmm. that just continues to grow. Mm -hmm. Birding Classic. and again pollinator gardens mm -hmm. continue to grow. Uh, Consider if you already have some of these things. Consider um, adding a water feature so that you can, you know, give the birds some water. But butterflies need water too. Bees, pollinators for bees. Bees are looking for a water, water source. Too, they yeah. need a water source as well, and that they can have safety in your pollinator garden. Just add a small fountain, even a bird bath. It would be a great idea to help all these different pollinators to sustain themselves mm, awesome so again it looks like you know really college cottage gardens and that type of gardening mm -hmm. and landscaping oh, is yeah. the theme i think so yeah more I, naturalistic i like it yeah i like it and you're hitting all the senses too you know you you know smell you know touch yep and all the you know it's yep. beautiful nails them all yeah. if you have any questions about this make sure you call the hotline yeah. what's that number julio eight five six Nope. <laughs> 609-685-1880. I was going to give you my number, but I'm not. <laughs> but you can get a hold of Julio Zamora at 609-685-1880. That's right. Uh, if you've got questions, make sure you call us. Yep. We'll be right back in the garden <laughs> right, after. right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other composts, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed 
for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, PA. Ashcombs Farm and Greenhouses, Mechanicsburg, PA. Sickles, Little Silver, New Jersey. Your next houseplant is waiting for you in Bloomer's Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomer's recognizes that houseplant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A houseplant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Well, for many of you winter bird watchers like me, <laughs> you're right here, there are a few sights more rewarding than a brilliant flash of red coming through the white snow. And, a few, uh, awesome. and you know what bird I'm talking about, right, Len? I do, the cardinal. Yes, sir. That cardinal is, uh, is coming to When it to shows up, at, you know, it, it just brightens up everything it does. you know you could have a crummy day yeah and like you could have <laughs> like common birds on your bird feeder like mm-hmm. a bunch of sparrows or something but then when a cardinal comes in oh that's different and if you've ever noticed and uh-huh. this is important to what we're going to talk about how to attract cardinals to your feeder basically mm-hmm. into your home cardinals they kind of creep up and sneak up on your bird feeder that's it's almost right. like the, you know they're, they're kind of stalking your bird feeder that yeah. they often will come from the ground. They don't fly and land on your feeder. Yeah. They're looking around. Any Sh- cats around? Yeah, you know, they're looking. They sometimes will be in like some of the landscape shrubs oh, that yeah. you may have around it, uh-huh. and that they really are just kind of again yeah, seeing out. if the coast is clear, <laughs> yeah, and then it. all of a sudden they're there. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's something mm-hmm. to have a little bit of cover for the cardinals. To, to hang out in before they jump onto your feeder. So just keep that in mind. Mo- having a feeder, too. I mean, having the right feeder. Kind of like feeder, in the right? studio, we have a platform feeder uh, in that where it's it's perfect, but, again, I, I'm not crazy. Do you, do you ever have a platform feeder? I don't particularly no, like platform feeders. Either. But but what it does is it, it will leave the seed open so th- they can see it and they can jump on it and that mm. they they don't feel awkward like because if you have you have to cardinals have to have a place to sit on and one like little spoke or little <laughs> not gonna work you know again no. it's like like it's a peg it doesn't work yeah no. our one of my favorite feeders is a broom feeder mm. um squirrel proof feeder but it has this the little stems that come out but it comes with a cardinal ring so that it goes around yeah. the base. So it has a place for that cardinal to be able to perch on. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it is uh, It's also the food. Now, we've had this discussion before, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Food for me, I, I don't want a mess at my house. <laughs> so I don't want yeah. to have shells. So I go with a shellless mix, 
It has to be very high in sunflower. And again, this is whole sunflower, sunflower meats or sunflower hearts. And that putting a little bit of safflower in there. Now, if you're looking on YouTube, you take a look. We've got coals in here. Their cardinal mix has got safflower uh, mixed together and that they have a hot version of this too. They do. Uh, so it gets the, gets the squirrels. And why does it get the squirrels, Julio? <laughs> Because, <laughs> well, I can see if you can get this one right. You almost screwed up with your telephone number. It was, it was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, yeah, they have, you know, their glands are, oh, they, they, oh, they don't like that heat. Not at all. Yeah. You know, it's hot. Right? Because yeah. I guess squirrels it's, can spit. Yes. Because they have saliva glands, <laughs> right? They have glands, yeah. They, they Birds are. do not. No, they don't. So the squirrels are going to get that capsian pepper that's in the hot meat mm -hmm. and that they're going to like, you know, whoa, Ooh. I got a hot foot. <laughs> hot tamale. <laughs> yeah, I'm not coming here. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> again, <laughs> that they'll take off, right. but where the, the all of the birds will eat it because, again, yeah. they're not feeling that. Uh, you know, I always wondered if, like, birds have a crop where it all digests. If, like, later on it hits their stomach, maybe they're saying, oh, uh. I don't know. <laughs> no. If anybody has that information, I'd be Let more than happy to hear it. But, uh, again, they keep coming back for more. Yes, they do. You know, again, the best time for cardinals, like, there are some times where you won't see them in the middle of the day, in the brightest part of the day, yeah, that they'll come early morning mm -hmm. or at twilight just before dark. Um, they're one of the first birds to come in to feed and the last one to feed at night. So both early. And, and again, cardinals, the red that we're talking about, the red cardinal is the male. And the, the female is like a more of a brownish, more subdued color. Uh, in the bird world, that happens a lot. Like you think about uh, like a... Like a lot of the ducks, for instance, a lot of the ducks are like the mallard is all like, you know, oh, yeah. you know, won't get me. <laughs> peacocks. You look at peacocks. peacocks you know, yeah, females one. don't put that feather up. Uh -huh. You know, though no, that no. that tail feather is all the male Males. trying to attract, attract a woman. Trying to attract. It's like Julio, the way he dresses at night. Oh, Same yeah. thing. <laughs> all decked out, all decked looking, out. looking yeah, look sharp. That. You know, yeah, my, we have a sharp heels. dressed man anywhere. No, uh, <laughs> high heel uh, shoes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that where again, it's it's the males that are the bright ones and that yeah. stand out. Uh, and I think it hardly has something to do with the nesting patterns where they don't oh. want they want to be hidden within the brush and things mm -hmm. and again that goes back to having an area where the cardinals can hide right. in before they jump onto your feeder yeah. so give them a place to hide <sighs> again there it's not that they're necessarily picky eaters mm -hmm. uh, but they do they do like to have some, i mean i and i've said this before everybody where i just go and do straight hold sunflower and it just is clean. I have tons of cardinals, but I also have other songbirds. Like in the spring, in the summertime, I have finch. I have house finches. Finch is, I, oh, I have, beautiful. I have, I have every type of, of you know, Birds. bird that you yeah. bird that you can imagine. Downy yeah. woodpeckers all oh, winter long. No kidding. Wow. But uh, again, you want to make sure that if you can get them a water source. When it was so cold, right right around yeah. Christmas time, we Amazing. all of the water was frozen. Mm -hmm. Birds cannot eat or to drink rather from a frozen pond or, or a frozen uh, bird feed or bird uh, water. So you got to make sure that you're providing some type of water. You would be surprised how many birds that that will attract. So yeah. if you can. There are such a thing as bird bath heaters, and that's something that you should look into. Cool. Anything to add? Do you do you get cardinals over oh, there yeah. in Pittman? Oh yeah, I got it over there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They come every year. Do you have? You I, must I, have them now, right? Oh yeah, I saw the other day. I saw one. Yeah, there you go. And a and a female too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And did you know that they are monogamous? Uh, no, I didn't. They are. How about that? They are. That's a good thing to know. Thing they to... like those birds. <laughs> <laughs> They're like those birds. Like, uh, uh, all right. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be back no, right no, after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. 
That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix with EcoPeat is the perfect ready-to-use potting mix for all your succulents. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix is a blend of sphagnum peat moss, perlite, and eco-peat. Eco-peat is a natural wood fiber from peat bogs. When added to fertilome peat moss, it produces a superior professional substrate with an exceptional ratio of air porosity and water holding capacity. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix will ensure maximum drainage with ideal water retention. It's simply the best succulent mix on the market. Ask for Fertilome by name at your local garden center. Available at Daniel's Garden Center, Sumneytown Pike, Harleysville, Pennsylvania. Gaspers Home and Garden, 316 Tanyard Road, Richboro, PA. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Coles, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower, peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomer's in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. You're listening to Bloomer's in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. I I don't know how this got started, but <laughs> Pantone Color of the Year. We've been following this for at years? least a decade. Wow. Uh, is Viva Magenta. Oh, Viva. Now, I'm not sure how a color is brave and fearless and a pulsating <laughs> color whose exuberance promotes a joyous and optimistic celebration, writing a new narrative. Mm. Well, wow. how about that? <laughs> color. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, also, uh-huh. okay, it invokes the forces of nature. Pantone 18-1750 Viva Magenta <laughs> galvanizes our spirit, helping us to build our inner strength. Wow. <laughs> Is that amazing? <laughs> that was said by the executive director of Pantone Color Institute in a oh, press release. Right. Ah, it's pretty amazing. It is. <laughs> but, you know, it does control fashion. Uh, it controls like furniture and fabric co- choices uh, and absolutely has influenced uh, colors in the garden. Mm-hmm. Now, yes. fortunately, there's a lot of plants that are this color already. Uh, certainly, there's this color in uh, dahlias. Uh, there are there's this color in petunias. Like there's a there's a really nice petunia that that has that uh, magenta color. I don't think it's called magenta. But it it's very close. It's very close. Um, it's you know being on radio, it's a little disadvantage. So again, we're plugging YouTube. Subscribe to us on YouTube. You'll see uh, what the color looks like. That it's a it's a you know everybody kind of knows what magenta is, but this has a little more red and blue in it. Does that make any sense? I'm, I'm trying, folks. Um, you know, a little bit crimson. So 
So it's really right in between like a, a warm and a cool color. Mm, it is. But but very nice. It's a good choice. I didn't like last year's choice. I think that was the one that was looked like uh, tropical plants. Like it was a green leaf. green leaf. I think the horticultural industry had a more influence <laughs> over that yeah, than, than anything else. And I was like, oh, green. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's what green. What are you do with that, right? <laughs> you know, because this one you can't say it's a primary color. Like, oh, it's red. Yeah. You know, it's not pink. Yeah. You know, so again, it, it's a it's a great color. It is a great color, and uh, I think that that this will have an influence. Impact, on, yeah. I don't know if I would call paint my house this color. <laughs> I would <laughs> but, either, uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, but again, the way that that I love the romantic language, yes. how it's described. I, like I mean, yeah, I mean, Mr. you're really <laughs> look look what these guys read. Read that. <laughs> look what they say. As a bright crimson red, Viva Magenta balances boldness with a feeling of fun. This dynamic mix exudes rebellion, yeah. <laughs> not at the expense of <laughs> softness. <laughs> It embodies an expression of fierce grace. How about that? Uh, <laughs> Inspiring us to show up with confidence and humanity. Wow. Wow. Uh, <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. Viva Magenta. Viva, <laughs> Viva Magenta. Get ready. <laughs> right. Get ready. Yeah. I can see sweaters this color. Right. I can see, um, I absolutely can see a paint color this way. I don't know. Would you paint a room that color, magenta? Uh, I, don't I don't think so. Either. Maybe if you did half a room. Oh, I don't know. But anyway, so I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I again, and then and then it gets a little political. <laughs> it does. You're ready? And, and again, I, I love what Pantone does when they pick this the colors of the year. But, okay, you judge out there in Radio Land. Mm -hmm. Viva Magenta offers us assurance and motivation we need to weather long-term disruptive events. Wow, how about that? Three years deep into a pandemic, facing a war. And what well, war? I guess we're talking about maybe oh, the Ukraine? Ukraine? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I ain't going. <laughs> <laughs> An unstable economy, wow. social unrest, supply chain breakdowns, and mounting climate change. Wow. We need to heal. Oh, we do. And still, we need to find the motivation to continue. Mm -hmm. Viva Magenta. All right. Cloaks us in both power and grace. How about that? And sends us out into the world with the verb. There's a good word, verb. We've yearned for. How about that? Oh. Do you think they really thought about that? Like... We need to find a color that's going to have to weather disruptive events. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's put uh, that together. Maybe. Oh, maybe. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we have, let's see, we have one, two, three, four, four people. Who thinks that they thought about that? <laughs> so, oh, uh, TJ thinks so. Aaron? Aaron say no. No, no. They just said this is a good color. We can make a lot of money off of it. Yeah, All right. We, so. we can add it to the palette of colors in both yeah. every computer, swatch. Yeah, every swatch <laughs> is now without Viva Magenta. Right. You are on the downside. Uh, it continues on. Uh, For the home, daring designers can harness the full power of the color of the year as yes. velvet couch oh. or lacquered wall. Look at that. I Aaron, if I wall. go to your house and you have a velvet couch of Viva Magenta, <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm going to think that you never talked to your wife. <laughs> you, know, got you, you got a burgundy got couch? Yeah. Well, burgundy's okay, yeah. but Viva Magenta, again, it's not a burgundy. Um, those who desire a more neutral home can use it as a pop of color. Now, I like that. That's yeah, like good. That. Uh, uh, let's see. As a sculpture, oh, okay. Murano glass lighting fixture or striking... What is Ikebana? Ikebana. Floral ranger. It's a Japanese thing. Do you know that or are you guessing? No. It, I saw it at the uh, flower show. Well, aren't you special? <laughs> 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 or again, uh, uh, let's see. An entry of Viva Ginger packs a lot of drama in small dose. Now, I, I absolutely agree with that. <sighs> Look it up. It is a good color. I like the color. I like it in flowers, not necessarily in my walls. Um, but again, it will be a massive trend in everything from fashion to home decor. Uh, but I, I read somewhere that, ready? Uh, cocktails. Co Whoa. Look at that. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, bars and restaurants are creating gorgeous cocktails inspired by the Pantone color of the year for 2023. Viva Magenta. How about that? I'm going to have to try that out. Yeah. I guess it has grenadine in it. 
<laughs> anyway, so oh, look it up. Take a look. We'll have it on our YouTube page. Uh, Viva Magenta. Viva Magenta. I'm liking it. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> I'm going to get you a shirt. <laughs> yeah. I actually bought a, it's almost right. Viva Magenta. It's more purple, though. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, okay. A quarter zip sweater. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's on sale at uh, Where? Uh, Nordstrom. Oh yeah. Well, no, it's the rack. Oh, the Nordstrom. rack. Yeah, it was okay. really on sale. It was the only right. size. They only had one size <laughs> left, and it happened to be my size. How about right. that? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. <laughs> you tuned in. Yes, you, you get did. to listen. <laughs> All right. We'll be back in the garden right after this. <laughs> Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Your next houseplant is waiting for you in Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomers recognizes that houseplant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A houseplant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with the number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Holly Tone. Holly Tone is a perfect blend of natural, long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Part of owning plants is the, the psychological boost that you get when you care for them, huh, Land? It's absolutely true. We always talk about that. It's absolutely true. But mm-hmm. one of the things that, that is kind of a mystery, it's like, all right, mm-hmm. Every department has leaf shine in the <laughs> in the plant department. Yeah, it does. and it's like, all right, well, why? I get it because they're prettier. Mm-hmm. You know, they look yeah. they look nice, shiny, but does it have any real growing Impact. benefit? That's right. And it turns out that it does. It does yeah. That the dust, like I have, we we were talking last week about um, snake plants and how my snake plants get dusty. Yeah, um, and that where I go and wipe them down to brighten them up. And I've got a couple other plants like that, that where it shows dust. I have a fiddle leaf fig, same thing, thing. big leaf surface and clean it, clean it off. Mm -hmm. That dust stops the sunlight from penetrating into 
the leaf of the plant and therefore cuts down on the photosynthesis that take place. Wow. So cleaning your leaves is is a great way to to first of all help them that way, but also insects. <laughs> like the hiding insects that that will be on house plants like you could have an infestation of something like mealybug that you think is dust, but it turns out to be an insect because it, it looks like a, like a little piece of a cotton ball, you know, and it, and it looks like dust. But no, they're killing your plant. They're eating it all. They also just look better. Do, do you you have do you, what do you do with your house? Do you do you do the the, the clean the leaves? No, mine are pretty clean. I'm calling Andy. I'm going to call your brother and ask him, are are, are your house plants clean? Hello, this is the horticulture <laughs> police. <laughs> yeah, here you go. Oh my the horticulture police wants to know, are your house plants leaves clean, clean or not? Yeah. That, well, oh, my God. Well. No, Eddie, you know, uh, my, my plants look pretty good. I'm telling you. But they do. Well, see, you don't you don't have dogs. You no, don't have I don't. cats. I don't have any you, of that. Andy's the only pet that you have. Yeah, it's it. You know? <laughs> so, Andy, we love you. Oh, yeah, we do, yeah. <laughs> do. Andy is Julio's brother and yeah. is a great guy. Yeah, he is. Once, yeah. a, once in a while. Except he retired <laughs> yeah. before. Yeah, really. Yeah, I can't get a discount at the no, uh, no. Ralph Lauren Ralph store Lauren's anymore. Store. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Well. <laughs> that, uh and again, it is. It does. It's. It's realistic. Where, um, like, we had three dogs oh, and God. two cats, and that you're going to get a lot of dust mm. and dander from the the them, and not to mention, like, if you've got you know, two kids, like Aaron, oh, you yeah. know, you <laughs> yeah, got that, that dust and dander, and, oh, yeah. and dander. Bring it a, all. <laughs> but it it will be. It, there'll be duster because oh, yeah. you know kids are moving around. You oh, yeah. you know, it's it's not. You know, my yeah. kids have all now moved out, mm-hmm. and that uh, I guess I'm a bachelor. Yeah, you are. They took the dogs with them. <laughs> <laughs> you got the now, house I love by dogs. Now I've got two cats. Okay. So the actual, it's not as messy on the plants. So mm-hmm. it's uh, it's something that again that I, I need to take care, of, but I won't have to do it all the time. Okay. And it's something once every couple months. Oh, it's yeah. not something that you have to do with like watering. It's just again, it, it's you want to expose the the sunlight mm-hmm. to your plants, and it also it's good for you. It is. When you take care of a plant, psychologically, it helps you. It calms you down. It slows you down, mm-hmm. so that yes. you can sometimes get your head straight. Um, we all need, need things that. to help us do that. And house plants are an, an easy way that you can do that, and and that it is study after study has shown that house plants absolutely will help you to have a better. I want to say state of mind, but but as far as uh, I think you know what I'm talking yeah. about, right, Julio? Yeah, yeah. So what do you do? You, I would first get rid of the heavy dust first, mm-hmm. and then. You're going to go and take the house plant leaf shine right and you're going to spray it. You can spray it on a cloth first or you can spray it on the plant leaves and wipe it down. And again, it's something where you're also looking for some insects on your plants as you do this. Your plants will look amazing. And we always talk about how, hey, I like getting compliments. You know, I really do. If you have guests come over and they see your plants, they will, like, wow. they you will be the rock star. Yes, you will. You'll be the rock star. Mm-hmm. Just make sure that you're gentle when you're wiping down the leaves, that okay. you don't rip any plant, any leaves and, and such. Start with the things that have the largest leaf surface first. And then, you know, some of those smaller leaf plants, I ain't touching mine. <laughs> it's like, like I just, I just, not, I'm just not doing it. I'm not going to polish a jade plant's leaves. No. But I, I will do an aglaonema, and I'll okay. do a, I'll absolutely do a, a snake plant. I'll, I'll do a peace lily. Mm-hmm. You know, all of those, and they'll look sharp. They will look oh, sharp. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, anything to add, Julio? Yeah. By the way, this product by Bonide, which is called Leaf Shine, 
it is also an anti-transpirant, by the way. <laughs> ah, ah, there you go. There you That's go. that ten dollar word $10 that means word. it will enclose and encapsulate, encapsulate the leaf that. so you don't lose as much moisture That's out correct. of your plant's root system that it kind of holds it in. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. I didn't know that, Julio. Oh yeah, it's on here. Very good. Yeah. Very good. So, you know, it does not only one thing, it does two things. Double ah, duty. Double duty. Yes. That's right. I like that. Yeah. I like that. So pick up your uh, Bon Eye Leaf Shine. And don't use it on your shoes, by the way. <laughs> yeah. No, no. No. You don't want to use it on your shoes. Send your complaint mail to Julio Zamora right. at Care of Bloomers in the Garden. Right <laughs> All right. We'll be right back to talk about Diffenbachia right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other composts, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Tony's Farm and Garden, Windsor, New Jersey. Espen Shades Garden Centers and Greenhouse, Lidditz, Pennsylvania. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with the number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Hollytone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural, long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len. He's Julio. This week's houseplant rant is about Diffenbachia. Oh. Yeah, our houseplant rants are about houseplants mm-hmm. that are easy to care for. And Diffenbachia is absolutely one of the easiest. Uh, it's also called dumb cane. You Why tell, is that, Julio? You want to tell the folks what that right. means? <laughs> because if you go and eat Diffenbachia leaves, that your vocal cords will be paralyzed. Oh, my God. I don't recommend it, but it uh, makes you think, yeah, like, you could you just shut up? Here, have a sandwich. Uh, no, that's lettuce. Uh, yeah, right. don't recommend it. Don't do recommend not do it. it. No. <laughs> but again, so it's just one of those interesting things. But Diffenbachia has grown so wide as far as the way that they look and varieties, and they somehow are polka dotted with, but they're all basically green and white, mm-hmm. but they're different varieties um almost too many it's like you know you know how many varieties of hosta there are like a gazillion uh, yeah <laughs> different <Devin> bucky <Bakke> is <laughs> getting the there <laughs> large leaves beautiful plant but it's easy easy mm-hmm. easy to take care of mm-hmm. grows great in full sun or and let's let me back that down 
indirect sun, okay, or low light situations. Um, low light situations, you got to make sure you, you do not overwater at, at any time. They are susceptible to being overwatered easily. So you want to go and make sure that you let them dry out completely where you think you're killing it, where you pick up the pot and it weighs like nothing, where it's like fe- like a feather. Yeah, then you water it real heavy and you let it go again until you do it. Uh, you need It needs water again. Misting the leaves can help during the winter. Okay, yeah. get one of those misters. misters yes, and what it does is it's it's basically raising the humidity levels around the plant. If you have other plants, like, do you have a plant stand, Julio, at your house? Plant stand, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. do you have like all your plants in one area? So, for yeah. instance, if you're uh, misting that, your plants, do you get the benefit of all your plants? I have in one room. I have you know a few together, but then I have other rooms are just one. One yeah. plant in okay. one room, yeah. All right. So, again, it it's misting is a big help to all oh, your yeah, plants, yeah. especially ferns and, ferns and yeah. things like that. They like to have that humidity raised. Um, again, if you have issues with it, it will be on the lower leaves. So you can take any browning leaves and just pinch them. It's it's not going to hurt them at all. It's just going to help them help them to look better and be easier to maintain because if every time you walk up and there's brown leaves, you're like, oh, no, this plant's dying. But it really isn't. It's just showing signs of adapting to the environment where it is and the actual time of year. Because right now, right, Julio? It's, we're getting more light, more light. every day yes. through June, June 22nd. So every day there's more and more, more sunlight. Yeah, so I hope I you it. everyone is enjoying that. Mm-hmm. Again, indirect light and that you may want to turn it because it yeah. will grow towards the light. And a lot of plants will do this. My fiddle leaf fig yeah. absolutely does yeah. that. I mean, it's like yeah. it's like, it's, like it's, leaning, it's leaning on something. It's like and so I just rotate it <laughs> so that it, yeah. it grows to the sun. Mm-hmm. Again, watering, dry it, let it dry, then water it. And you know what's something like don't fear – the shears. <laughs> Don't be afraid to cut it back. Cut if, back it, if it's not looking right or something, you can actually uh, cut Diffenbachia it back. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to look ugly for a while, right. it but a uh, it yeah. will flush out. And I recommend to do this in uh, springtime, spring, yeah. not necessarily winter, because right everything is slowing down a little bit. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, do you have a Diffenbachia? No. I, I do. You do? I do. Uh, Diffenbachia, to me, it has that big leaf surface and it has that feeling of tropicalness that, mm. that a lot of people like, right. <laughs> me in particular. Right. It's a great plant. Um, I uh, have shoemaker syndrome a little bit where a lot of times my, I don't get to take care of my plants as the, as the way I should or right. recommend or explain just simply mm. because my time is spent so much at the business or, or doing things that I was like, darn it. But that's one I can abuse. Yeah, it's when you, you know, actually, all kind of, of my plants <laughs> are abused or else I don't have them in my house any longer. Uh, because, again, a Diffenbachia, just like last week's snake plant, is an easy oh. plant to take care of. Again, letting it dry out is a beautiful thing mm-hmm. because it doesn't necessarily need to be moist, not wet. That's always a challenge. What the heck does that yeah. mean? So, again, look for a Diffenbachia at your local garden center. Pick one up. When you bring it to the car, don't let it go into a freezing cold oh. car, and you don't want to give it a draft. They, they're just no, no tropical plant's yeah, going to like no, that. No. So, Diffenbachia, give it a try. Yep, we'll be right back right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial six zero nine six eight five. 1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609 685 one eight eight zero, and we'll see you in the garden. Me and Julio. Hey, 
Thank you, everybody, for listening. We are short on time. Yep. Next week's show, we are oh. going to tell you all about our visits to the farm show, to the nursery show down in Baltimore, oh, no. and what we see as trends on the horizon. We'll see you next week right here in the garden. See you in the garden.